being such a large organization that caters to the interests of people and pedigree dogs across various interests from dog shows to dog sports, the FCI has what they call commissions, which are essentially committees of people that are dedicated or have a vested interest in those particular areas uh, of, of, of the canine world that the FCI also incorporates. And these people are, 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 for want of a better word, like guardians of this particular element. And so they form what the FCI has as commissions that um, go into looking into all the aspects and areas of that particular area of interest in pedigree dogs, um, whether it's a sport or whether it's um, the building blocks of, of, you know, of, of a particular breed. So the breed standards, um, the scientific commission, these are all commissions, what the FCI calls commissions, and they're formed by members who are all volunteers that put their time and effort into um, developing and being part of the groups that are the custodians of this particular area of interest. So in this series, I speak to many of the presidents or people from these various commissions that the FCI has. There are several commissions, and I hope to cover and be able to speak to as many of them as possible to, again, bring a better understanding of how the FCI works and how these people who are breeders and, and, and you know, trialers or, or exhibitors with interest in that particular area, how they uh, are part of the FCI and form an integral and important um, committee within the FCI to help bring better uh, meaning and understanding to this area. So I hope through this series, you get a better understanding of how these commissions work and how they assist the FCI in being this global organization with a universal interest to people in all areas of pedigree dogs. Hi everyone, and welcome to this episode where we find out more about the FCI commissions. And in today's episode, I speak with Jose Buganal, who is the president of the FCI Rescue Dog Commission Hi, Jose, how are you? And welcome to the show. Okay, thank you. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Okay. Yeah, just um, nice to have you with us. I, I'm gonna jump straight in. Um, can you briefly tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from and how you got involved with uh, Pedigree Dogs and specifically the commission? <laughs> okay, it's a long story, in fact. So first I am from Belgium. Okay. I am 68 years old, married, two daughters. I retired from the police, but long time ago, I was retired from 2012. Okay. Um, in fact, I was always living with dogs. You know, I am born in Africa, and where I was living in Africa, it was very dangerous with a white animal. Okay. So all children who have dogs, you know, for the snakes, for alligator, and so on. So. For me, it's common to have dogs near me or living with dogs. Yeah. After a while, uh, I use pure breed dogs. It's normal for me because my brother was a breeder for okay. German Shepherd. So when I, when I was 20, 21 years old, I get my first dogs at home when I was married. It was a German Shepherd from my brother. Nice. With, so a pure breed dog. And it is like that, you know, yeah, for me, it's normal to use pure breed dogs, it's better. Yeah. After that, when it was in 75, approximately, a friend of mine, he was a policeman, he was a canine. Okay. And he asked me, okay, Josie, would you come with me? We have a seminar about utility dogs and from uh, somebody from Switzerland. And uh, it's Mr. Fazio, he's one of the founder of the EGP, uh, International Programme. Yeah. And I say, okay, I go. And after this seminar, I say, okay, I want to do that. I want to, to practice with my dogs that, you know, tracking, obey dance, defense, and so on with my German Shepherd. And it was fine. As myself, I was a poly, uh, policeman. I, drew, uh, I trained as a dog handler for the police. Okay. And I stayed during 10 years, T9 professional canines in a special unit of the police, special forces, and for trekking and assault dog, and also for area search. So, but 85, 10 years after, I have to stop because from my career, you know, if I want to rank up, I have to stop this job. Right. So, but I stopped for uh, career, you know, for working, but not for sport. I continue a sport and in 19, 
86, I became a FCE judge for utility dogs. So nice. 30 years ago, you, you know, uh, I judged my first world championship in 92. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, then 93, and after that, nine uh, EGP World Championships. Excellent. And beginning of the 90s, we start with yes, two dogs in Europe. You know, it was common. We said we have an, uh, a lot of natural disaster around the world. And they start with uh, rescue dogs program in Belgium, everywhere in Europe, I mean. Okay. So the uh, a fire school, firefighter school, asked me to become a trainer for them. You know, I say, okay, but uh, you know, I know trekking, I know area search, but river, exactly, I don't know exactly. I imagine what could, could be, you know, but not exactly. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine was an uh, instructor in France in the fire school, you know, firefighting school. I go there during two years, each Tuesday, I spent a day with the firefighters in France each Tuesday during two years to learn about river work. Okay. After that, the Belgium uh, civil protection, you know, asked me to, to become their instructor. I okay. started like instructor for a few years. And in 1998, I became judge uh, for rescue dogs for FCI. Okay. That, you have to know that uh, rescue dog program was managed by the utility dogs section. Okay. In the beginning, you know? Yes. That's why I have been uh, judged from rescue dogs, and we don't have already the commission of rescue dogs. Okay. We start before, you know, I am a very old man in this story. <laughs> okay. Then after that, I have still dogs, trained dogs for competition for EGP uh, and so on. And then in uh, 2012, I become the delegate from the uh, Rescue Dog Commission. And in 2018, I become president. In place of Franz Jensen, he's a friend of mine. He says, okay, hey, Jody, you are judge, you are trainer, you are dog handler, please. Uh, I have too much work with my... Uh, Utility Dogs Commission, uh, and so on. Okay, and I become president. But I still work with uh, Belgium Chapel right now in Rescue Dogs. I'm level B myself with my dogs, and so it's very fine. Okay, and and you. So when was the Rescue Dogs uh, Commission formed? When did it break away, so called, from Utility Dogs and become an independent commission? What year was okay. that? Interesting question. <laughs> in 2003, in Dortmund, the General Assembly of CI decided to make, to separate utility dogs and rescue dogs. It was in Dortmund, 2003, and the first delegate meeting was in 2005 in Brussels. Then with all the delegates in 2006. But in the meantime, as in Europe we have IRO, IRO is the International Rescue Dogs Organization, with this, nearly the same program, FCI decided to make a partnership with IRO. You see, we start with our delegate meeting 2006, and in the meantime, we make a partnership with IRO. Who, 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 and, who, sorry, uh, Joseph. IRO, IRO is India Romeo Oscar, International Rescue Dogs Organization. Okay, excellent. All and, right. Yeah, and we are partners. It okay. means you are doing together right. the program, the rules, everything. We have nearly the same mission. Right. With the difference for uh, FCI is more to use uh, pure breed dogs and IRO is more for preparing, you know, it's a funder, uh, foundation to become a rescuer. They make a special training for dog anglers to become, uh, to join rescue uh, service in the world. Okay. So they are working together. It's, we are not in competition, we are complementary. You know, Excellent. they have their own world championship and we have our own championship because, but for us it's just with our world championships is reserved for pure breed dogs. Okay. It's normal and right? because that's the mission of the FCI. 
but yeah. together, you know. So we start to 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 together, you know. Uh, and then after that, uh, yes, we have meeting or uh, each year we have an annual meeting with the delegates and so on. Yes. Okay, so you, you guys work together in terms of developing the programs, keeping up to date, training, all that, so that both organizations are benefiting from this. Um, they are, are, they, are they a private organization or they're non-governmental? How, how do they differ from us? Who um, do they come under, you know, like the umbrella of who, or um, who runs them essentially? Yeah. It's a little bit complicated. <laughs> I mean, because it, uh, uh, IRO is coming from Austria. Okay. And they are working under the umbrella of the Aust Australian uh, government. Okay. And also private. It's a mix, you know, uh, both of that. But the president of uh, IRO is always somebody from Austria. Always. Okay. Josie, I'm going to stop you actually there and I actually ask you for the benefit of those uh, to clarify what is the Rescue Dog Commission, because there's a lot of misunderstanding. People seem to think that it's for, you know, dogs that have been abandoned and are being rescued. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the Rescue Dog Commission is to clarify that so people understand what it's about if they haven't already picked up so far what, what it is the uh, Rescue Dog Commission does. Okay, again, a good question, because a lot of people first they don't think what we are really. The commission of rescue dogs is concerning the training, the use of dogs for to rescue people. It means we have six different disciplines. Okay. We have trekking discipline, we have uh, area search discipline, okay. rubber discipline, water walk discipline, avalanche dogs. And just now, main trading. Main trading is a kind of trekking, but in urban uh, fields. So okay. we have six <laughs> different disciplines. What was the one before the last, the second last one? What was that you said? The before main the... trading. Main trading. We have avalanche dogs, snow dogs, walking in the snow for avalanche. Ah, okay, okay. Right. Okay, uh, and so on. But, you know, uh, we have a lot of dogs who are training in rural and area search together. You know, they, they, they change. And we have, you can say we have three different groups. We have trekking. Trekking means uh, you start to, to follow a scent from the start to the end, to the victim. Right. Yeah. And main trading is the same. Then we have indicate dogs. It means uh, like area search, and river, you don't have a start. You don't know where is the victim is hidden, you know? So okay. the, the dog is like hunting dog, you know, going left, right. And when you find a victim, it's locating and indicating the victim the right. second time. So river, area search, avalanche dogs are nearly, the beginning of the starting is the same. Then you have water walk. It's very, it's very special for water walk. It's not a nose walk, eh? it's a rescue program. Okay. Then uh, you have, uh, yeah, Lawin. Main trading is the same than uh, tracking. You know, we can see. And what's the specialty for us to become rescue judge? Okay. You have to, to be uh, ready to judge all the six disciplines. Wow. Yeah, it's very difficult because you have to be involved in the six discipline. And okay. before to become judge, you have yeah. to do to practice minimum with two different dogs in two different disciplines. Excellent. Wow. Uh, uh, and we have the same organization for the Dutch than IRO. So we are dealing about that. And the commission, what uh, uh, our main uh, job is to make rules, you know, common rules with IRO, to up to date this regulation, you know, then uh, to to schedule, you know, big events like World Championships, okay. uh, individual, because in our commission, we have two uh, different kinds of World Championships. We have individual uh, championships and team World Championships. We speak later about that. Okay. Then we have a working group, working group to prepare the new regulation, you know, uh, uh, and so on with, uh, with judges. Then each year we schedule a seminar Okay. Seminar for uh, judges and for trainers because 
in our meaning, it's better to, uh, to have a good connection between the dock handlers and the, uh, the, the rule with judge, both of them. So take always in account the remarks and the proposals from the dock handlers. Okay. Uh, that's the main goal of our commission. Okay. And, and um, how, what sort of, um, you know, uh, how popular is this globally or how, is, is it mainly in Europe at the moment or do you have interest from competitors from South America, from Asia, from the other FCI sections? Uh, what's the sort of numbers we're seeing of people involved in, in this sport? Okay. It's coming very, very, very popular. Why? Because nowadays we have a lot, a lot of natural disasters everywhere around the world. Okay. So all nations, uh, national rescue services, you know, are looking where to train dogs who are speaking to me about Malaysia, they ask from yeah. Japan to come and so on. Yeah. We have the same uh, not problem, we have the same situation, you know, and you have to realize that our program, you know, when you are level B, is a foundation to become a rescuer with your dog. Wow. Uh, yeah, as you make competition, you know, you make tests, uh, completion of a test in EPO air, you know, for rescue dogs, it means you are the, the foundation to become uh, a rescuer in the, in the matter you are training your dog. Okay. So it's very interesting for rescue services, you know, to contact us and to, to have keeper for trainers, judges from our, that's why we start to be very popular in Europe. Okay. Nearly all, uh, all countries from Europe are member of our commission. Okay. Now in South America, we have Argentina. Okay. They are very popular in Argentina. Yeah. I am now working with America, <laughs> uh, with the States, but it's not a problem of rescue of our, our program. It's a program, uh, it's not a problem, but it's a uh, administrative, you know, uh, situation. Uh, with FCI and recognition of nation. It's the same for Asia. Uh, I am now in contact with Iran, uh, Iran, China. The, right. the ask us to, to train dogs, you know, uh, because it's a need. It's really a need. And as I told you before, as FCI, you know, uh, a country is member of FCI, have a lot of canal club inside its country. Right. So for uh, Rescue service is easy because the people don't, they don't have to travel to come to the main station to train the dogs. They can train the dogs with the same program inside the small clubs, right. you know? Uh, yeah, and they are sure if they obtain the level B, you know, they are sure that the, the dog is ready for mission, you know? Then after, it's the foundation and to become a rescuer. After they need more requirements like uh, radio, your first uh, app, you know, and so on. But it's very popular. It's very popular. Uh, for an example, we have about 3,000 tests a year <laughs> in the world about a rescue. Okay. It's a lot. You Can know? I ask you that the, the, the majority of the people getting involved with their commission are doing this because they are serious about becoming professional rescuers or helping in rescue missions for real situations where there's a disaster or where there's an avalanche or something like that, that it's not just to, although they're competing in these competitions that you're holding and these tests, but their aim is for that to use these dogs to actually be of use to help in, in natural disasters. Is that correct? Yes, you're right, totally right. But a lot of uh, judges are involved, you know, because when you train dogs like that, you have, <laughs> it is very hard, you know. So, yeah, lot of them, majority of them are both, you know, uh, sport and involved in training of uh, in rescue service, you know, both nearly all of them. Like me, I was professional in the beginning, you know, and I still uh, work with when they need, they ask me, you know, and so right. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, majority. 
do, do you find that some countries who have maybe professional rescue dogs in terms of, you know, a, a natural disaster rescue team or something, are they, do they participate in, 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 uh, in, your, in the FCI uh, tests or maybe the IRO? Which ones do they, uh, do they participate in both or, or do they just join you for training and nothing else? No, both, okay. both. And that's why in the beginning I say IRO and FCI are complementary, you know, why? Because IRO, when you get level A or level B, you know, we have three categories. We start with V level, then A level, and then B level, the highest level, you know? When you are A level, you can join the MRT. MRT is a special courses given by the IRO to become a rescuer, you know, that they train you for radio, G, uh, GPS, you okay. know, evaluation, that's that. But to train the dogs, you know, in each country, for example, in Belgium, we have just two clubs are affiliated to the IRO. It's okay. difficult. Each country for France, they have just one club affiliated to, uh, so they need places to train dogs. So they join our club because we have the same program, you, right. you know? Right. We are complementary, you know? Uh, yeah, for us it's normal, both, you know? With myself, with my dog, I make test FCE, right. and I make IRO test. Okay. You know, it's... it's I guess for these people, it's an opportunity to test the dogs, to keep yeah. them being, uh, you know, trained or, or, or practicing so that yeah. in the real situation, uh, that it's 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 easy for them, or, or they, it's it's you know they are highly yes. yeah, yeah of course because yeah. we have the same rules you know it's not a problem for us tomorrow to work with somebody from Israel or from Ireland we have the same rules the same uh, you know way to work with uh, our our dogs you know so it's very easy for implementation of uh, those people inside. Uh, a, a rescue team, but what I have to say, yeah. it's not because you train a dog and you are level B. It's sport dogs, okay. you know. You have to 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 respond to the minimum requirements of the uh, rescue service. I mean, from sport, ears, and so on. You know, because for insurance it's very dangerous. So you have to to go there and to have the minimum requirements to, uh, to practice with the air dogs. And then sometimes is the problem. Uh, I mean, for uh, teams, we have a natural disaster, maybe, I, I don't know, in Turkey, for an example, because it happens. Each uh, country sent emergency rescue service. Okay. But it's normal they chose first the firefighters, civil protection, you know, police, army first, you know? Yes. Because they have insurance if, and they can uh, answer immediately, you know, but no. A dog handler with a, in a small club, you know, practicing our rescue program, we are allowed to join this, uh, you know, this service after training, special training, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, so is, it, is it training both the dog and the handler? Because obviously both have yes. to be qualified to do this. Uh, yeah. It's not just about training the dog, but no, no. handler as it's well. A team. Yeah, it's a team. Okay. And we always uh, use uh, the word of team. It's not possible. You know, you can train a dog. It's very good. World yeah. champion. And you give this dog to another uh, dog handler and it doesn't work. It's a team. You, you have to feel. You, you have to read your dog. You know, it's very... Uh, it's very difficult because you know rescue dogs you follow it's the dogs to professional <laughs> because uh, it's the dogs you yeah. have the nose to find the victim you yeah. know you have to, uh, yeah. to to put the dog in good condition to 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 find some uh, the victim and to help you you know you are just training the dog but the team it's a teamwork okay and roughly how long does it take to train a dog from scratch from zero to be able to do some rescuing, how long does it usually take to train a dog? I mean, for minimum, minimum, I say minimum three, four years. For oh, rubber, yeah, 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 minimum. For, yeah, yeah, you, you, you are allowed to start competition uh, test when your dog is 15 months old. 
V level. After V level, you have to do it with a level very good, you know? Then you can go to A test. A test, you have to do uh, two tests with minimum good. And then you can join B test. Uh, you know, it's very long. It, it takes from V to B test minimum two years. So you start when the dog is 50 months old and you are already at uh, level B when the dog is around three years, four years old. And for tracking, main training, it takes minimum four or five years. Wow. Okay. It's more difficult. And, and can you tell us, you mentioned earlier that obviously with FCI, it's all purebred dogs, pedigree dogs, um, IROUs, uh, non purebred dogs as well. Um, no. Or do they also use only purebred dogs? Yeah, it's a far debate and a bad debate about that. You know, okay. And IRO, they don't request pure dog you know, for their championships and so on. It's good. You know, it's a, a very good showcase. You know, it's very good, you know. But in fact, if you are professional, you don't start with the dog you have because, you know, you don't know after two years or three years of training, you know, the dog is good or not. You have to take the opportunity. And all IRO members who are working high level with dogs, they are pure breed dogs, you know. Uh, yeah, the okay. president of IRO is the breeder of German Shepherd, so yeah. you know, yeah, okay. yeah, it's yeah, a far day, but you know, it's instinctive. They, you know, it's more predictable what they are capable of doing. Um, you know, that they are good nose work or they're good at all these things, it's, it's predictable. And the amount of time you have to put in training, uh, if you spend two years with a dog or unknown parentage or unknown breeding. Uh, and then it's it's a lot of time and effort that could have been used um, because this is serious work. This is not just a hobby for most of you. This is a very serious thing uh, about being involved in life saving, actually. Um, so it, it's uh, uh, I'm not surprised that it's uh, that they all use purebred dogs because it's uh, the amount of training that goes in. Josie, can you tell me a little bit about the breeds of dogs that you all generally use? Um, in, in the um, Rescue Dogs Commission, what breeds are popular and for what reasons? Okay. Normally, inside the rules, all kind of breeds will be used. But normally, the dog handler use the breed in the area they are working for. I mean, for trekking, we will use more German Shepherd. You know, we will use Belgian Shepherd or hunting dogs like the blood hound or something like that. Okay. For rubber, we prefer light dogs like uh, border quarry, okay. uh, yeah, retriever sometimes, okay. Belgian shepherd again, because they are not suffering from the heat, from the warm and so on. It's very important. And that's why pure breed dogs is very essential on in my opinion, because the breeder have uh, to product good dogs in the way we will use after. You know, you can imagine for tracking, I was speaking about tracking dogs, the temperature of the dogs is rising three degrees after a track. It's wow. very, very, the dog has to be trained and to be breed in this way, you know? So it's very, 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 if you don't use, and you start your training with the dog you have, you know, without, taking account all the difficulties for the future with the dog training is like to lottery, you know, and professional, they don't play lottery. You know, we yeah. have to, to, to use a pure breed dogs in what we expect from the dogs. Right. It's very, very, very important. And, and, and so, so um, okay, in, in using a breed like uh, the Belgian Shepherd or a German Shepherd, um, wouldn't they be a bit intimidating to people, especially as rescue dogs, if, you know, someone sees this great big dog barking at them or whatever, would it be a little bit intimidating to people? Um, okay. How would we all deal with that? For indicating, for uh, indicating, uh, we have three kinds of indicating. The first one is barking, and then can cause problems sometimes, you know, uh, with Belgium traffic, uh, utility dogs, I mean, in general. Uh, you have a big rotor just in front of you. If he's barking, you say maybe it could be dangerous. Yeah. Then 
yeah, you, you have an, another system is natural way than uh, you have extra for tracking, I mean, for main trading, because then you have people, you know, just front of you. Okay. As I said, the dog can indicate by lying down and looking to the... And what sort of numbers of people are you getting at your competition? Do you, now, you mentioned that you have one main event a year uh, or two events. Can you tell us what the events are? And can you tell us what sort of numbers of participants you would get at these events? Okay. For FCE side, we are speak first about FCE. Okay. The World Championship for FCE lies a CASIT. You know what means a CASIT? Yeah. 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 Uh, we need pure breed dogs, just only pure breed dogs. Okay. FCI, nowadays, we have two different kinds of World Championship. Okay. One year, we have World Championship by teams. Okay. It means you have a team leader okay. and three team dog handlers. Okay. One dog handler with a dog. And they're working the three dogs in the meantime on the field. Okay. It's very particular. Okay. Then it's one year. The next year is the first one this year. We have individual World Championship. Okay. About the team World Championships, normally, now with the coronavirus pandemic, it was minder. You know, it's normal. But normally we have concerning 25, 27 teams. It okay. means 80, 100 dog handlers involved. Wow. About our individual uh, world championships, we will stop <laughs> our listing, you know, for uh, participants at 150. Wow, okay. It's a lot, huh? It's a lot. <laughs> Iro world championships, is uh, just the same, but you don't need to, to have a pure breed dog to participate. Right. And it's just, uh, just, it's individual world championships. And they have nearly each year more than 120 dogs. Uh, and the world championships are just for river area search and trekking. It's not possible. You have avalanche dogs to world championships or something, but it's more difficult for organi organizing, you know, we yeah. need the fields and so on. Uh, 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 no, for an example, uh, for an example for us, for the individual world championship, okay. maximum 50 dogs for area search, 50 dogs for rubber, uh, oh, 60 dogs for each, and 30 dogs for trekking. Because trekking, you know, is the 2,000 steps. You know, it's nearly oh. two kilometers for oh. just one dog. You know, so <laughs> you can imagine to organize that we need a lot of fields. That's a big problem for organizing. Right. And how do you, how do you, with the rubble and all that, how do you create that scenario to be able to test the dogs? How, how does that happen? I mean, it's not easy. Uh, do you have to set it up or you have train, training sites that do this because it's, you know, it's- Yeah, a, we, have, we have training sites. And generally, we try to make disaster training site, you know, with the help of uh, the country, uh, the government, or something like that, in all uh, factories, you know, destroy factories and something like that. Uh, we train our dogs there. But it's fun because, you know, people like that. So the imitation of people are very sometimes more difficult than the reality because yes. to hide a victim, you say, okay, when do you, do you want to eye this victim? Oh, yeah. It's terrible, the imagination. You know, sometimes I say, hey, hey keep cool <laughs> because it's, <laughs> it's too difficult. The reality is, ah, yeah, but it's true. And we always try to make the good connection with, with the uh, reality right. and what the exercise. It means yeah. in our program, when you judge that, you have tactic. So we say a scenario, we explain to uh, the dog handler a scenario, for an example, okay, we had a gas explosion in this factory, and three persons are missing, we don't know where, and so on. Uh, uh, you have 30 minutes to find these three uh, victims. They are men, 40 years old, and so on. And then the dog handler has to ask you a question. Okay, is it... Dangerous for us to go on this side. Do you have fire? Do you have chemical product? Do you have that? Uh, uh, are the people injured? Do you have picture from those people? Uh, do you need special access uh, and so on? And then 
you have chronomet, you know, because when they are speaking, the chrono is going on. So they have to ask a good question and to develop a good tactic with the dogs. Okay. You, you know, and by team is the same. But then you have to make a tactic with the three dogs, you know. One starts there, the second one starts there, the third one. Yeah, it's very exciting. People like that, you know. Right. You have to, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so yeah. how much, how much in, in a rescue, how much is it the dog doing the finding and how much is it the handler? I mean, I know you said partnership, but yes. obviously, um, who, who plays the more important role here? <laughs> the dog, definitely the dog. But if, for an example, you know, you have to read your dog. You know, you know what I mean to read the dog? Yes, you have yes, to, yes. to check your dog. Yeah. And your dog, you know, is going this place, sniffing. You could say, oh, maybe something like that. You know, the dog is leaving this uh, place. The dog can go. Uh, look, search, the dog is coming, and then at the attitude of the dog, you can say, okay, something like that. And then you have to work for indicating, you know, or, or, right. or to indicate the, the place of the, uh, of the victim. And that's why our regulations are very strict about that, you know. We make a lot of uh, tests. Uh, I mean, level V, it's okay, but level A, you have a special exercise, okay. 20 points on the 100 points in total, just reserved for indication. You have to see if the dog is good indication because it's very important, you know? Right. Essential. You can imagine in reality, a dog handler with his dogs, he says, victim, are you sure? Uh, I don't know. No, he has to be sure because, you know, you have to call uh, firefighters to add to, you know, a lot of engines, you know, you know a lot of uh, deployment of people. And, and then, oh, no, it's not a good place. You, <laughs> you have to be sure. You, you, you and, know? And, and are the dogs trained to find just live humans or also cadavers? I mean, like in a rescue ah, situation, you're not sure. A, whether... Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. A <laughs> very good question. Last year, Argentina makes a proposal about cadaver. Huh? Yes, it's possible. But for FCI, it's not possible. Why? Because to, uh, to work for cadaver, we need to use proper uh, chemical products, you know, the, the scent of a cadaver. Okay. And then you are not allowed to buy it, you know, to use it. So to organize uh, in kennel clubs, this kind of uh, techniques is, is difficult, you know, and it's against the law, right. you know, uh, that's why we don't use, but it's useful. We have a proposal of program and some, but, I mean, for cadaver, must be professional. Yeah. Must be for professional. So, Josie, they're basically trained to find a living human. So, purely rescue in that sense, sticking to what they're doing to rescue uh, living humans who are trapped or, 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 you know, in these sort of things, uh, rather than finding just bodies or whatever. They are looking for living humans, and and you know, that yeah. still can be rescued. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, when you mentioned that and you mentioned about rules, um, you know, the FCI is very big on, on the welfare of the dogs. So what rules are in place for your competitions to protect the, the, the welfare and the health of dogs as they compete? Uh, what have you all put in place? It's very easy answer. Because inside our rules, if you use force, violence, uh, if, you use the dogs, if you use violence, Ah, okay. okay. It's a dog or uh, use material, special electric collar, something like that, you know, on the field. Yeah. It's just disqualification. Okay. On the field or on the area of the field, it's just disqualification. So right. the welfare is, is not allowed for us. And then also, it's not compatibility. How do you say that? It's not compatible? Yes. Not compatible, yeah. Yeah, it's not compatible to, uh, to train a dog for nose work with violence because the dog needs 100 percent of initiative, independent. If you use force, it's not possible, you know. So it's not like I said, uh, obedience, just obedience with a leash. Maybe it works, but when you start working without leash with a dog, force. You know, <laughs> the dog yeah, will escape. Of course, because they're reacting in fear rather than wanting to please. 
Um, so out of fear, they're never going to be able to do this. And so we're in setting up the course, um, you know, with the rubble and all this, um, obviously you'll take great care to make sure that there's nothing that can harm the dog. Um, I'm sure that's what you'll do. But in a real situation, what happens to protect the dog, say from, you know, uh, pieces of metal or glass or all these things, what happens in the real situation then? Okay. It depends the dog and draw. But uh, uh, in reality, we can, uh, the dog can wear shoes, special shoes for dogs. We okay. have that. We have some uh, particular, you know, uh, how you call it, so that? Uh, goggles sort of thing to protect? Yeah, yeah, you goggles, know? you know, for, yes, like uh, US Army use for the army. I trained with American army for dogs, oh, okay. you know. Okay. Uh, I, I was based. I, I, I was working during 35 years with NATO forces. So, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I trained dogs with uh, Amer US Army and they use for bomb set, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have special material. But, yeah, it's a question of training that. It's not a question of training the dog. It's a question to train the dog to wear uh, shoes and so on. But we use that. That's why I say during the tactic, the dog handler has to ask to the officer in charge of the security of, uh, of the deployment, you know, of the teams, the risk for the dogs. He okay. says, okay, you have glass on the floor, you have metal and so on. Okay, all done. I put shoes on my dog. Okay. You know, okay, yeah. I always. Okay. So that, the, I mean, the welfare of the dogs is for them important. No point trying to go into a rescue. No, and no, no, no. And then the judge, you know, for an example, we not we don't allow it for dog angels to roam on the rivers or something like that. We say keep cool, security first. Okay. And when we make a scenario in a, I, I mean in a riverside or area search, we're always looking for security for the dog, and because sometimes it's, it's quite dangerous, you know, uh, for the dog. That's right. why first security, and if the judge see something wrong with the dogs, you know, uh, yeah. to send the dogs to uh, a dangerous place, we stop. We say, okay, stop. Right. Okay. And for somebody who's interested in becoming part of this in, in another country, an FCI country where they want to do this, how can they get involved in this commission? Who would they uh, reach out to, to be able to start the training and to start the program to do this, uh, Josie? Can you tell us who they should contact? Yes, <laughs> it is a big problem for me, uh, like president, because you know, yeah, 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 it's true. Nearly each week, I get a request about that, you know, because normally, you know, to be member of the commission, you have to be a FCI country member first, or uh, member of the FCI. Right. Then. For us to be inside our commission, you have to be the delegate of the country. Okay. That's the second problem. So when somebody asks me, oh, I have to, uh, to, uh, to be interested or to work, I say always contact your delegate or your national uh, canine organization right. about that. But I give always an answer. It's my job to do that, you know, not me, just my board are yeah. doing the same way. So, so for them to start, these competitions or to learn how to do this they would need to still um come through their national uh, canine organizations yes and then contact they'll be put in charge in touch with your commission to learn yes. how to to do these and and to start uh, these yes. programs is that correct yes it's correct i have just the same situation right now with bolivia bolivia asked me asked me to join our commission i say first you have to ask your uh, national canine organization, you know, uh, you have a special requirement administrative uh, program to do that, you know, uh, each year you, you send, uh, you, I want to be part of this commission, and yeah. then we can help you, okay. you know, uh, if you want, we can organize a meeting with you, uh, we have meeting, you know, we can make, with Zoom meeting is very popular okay. now, uh, you know, two weeks ago, I give a seminar uh, by uh, Zoom meeting to Iron, to candidate judge. You know, eight hours of Zoom meeting is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> terrible. 
yeah, 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 no. All our, my board and all the delegates, you know, you are so involved in what we are doing, you know, uh, you are benevolent, you know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You have to, because, you know, in rescue dog program, it's an outside uh, sport, you know, you stay outside during, hey, you can imagine eight hours inside the riverside in the wood. Uh, for water walk, you stay in the water during six, seven hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. terrible. You, you want to do it. It's it's not just the dogs have to be fit, but the handlers have to be very fit as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> both. Both have to be fit. Okay, yeah. Jose, last question. What are your aspirations for this commission? What do you hope um, to see happen with the commission uh, and, and to take it beyond? Okay. My main goal is to keep the good collaboration we have now with IRO because we are very complementary. And I have said just before, you know, because they have their own uh, world championship. We have our world championships because we have two. We have CASIT, they have IRO test. But as an old president of IRO said to me one day, more they are training for tests for world championship more they will be ready for real mission, you know? And that is a very good hope for me to keep this uh, good collaboration. Yeah. And then what the, I will wa want, you know, I believe it's very important that a good uh, understanding of our program uh, by the rescue service in the world, you know, that you are, here to help them, you know, uh, and we are ready to, uh, to save that. Uh, each other, we will be stronger. That's my hope. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I am in awe and full of respect for what yourself and all your, your uh, um, committee members, as well as everyone that's involved with the um, FCI Rescue Dog Commission, because it's not just something you're doing for fun or to win a medal or uh, a trophy but this is doing life-saving things uh, with our pedigree dogs, which is just incredible. So I thank you on behalf of everyone uh, that you guys still have this passion and continue to do it. And I wish you all uh, the very best for, for your future. So thank you again for your time. And I appreciate you taking your time to tell us a bit more about this wonderful commission. Thank you so much. And I will speak about that to the delegates next week. We have our annual meeting next week for the next World Championship in Italy. So be okay, sure. well, I, thank I you hope, so much. I hope we can do something to promote it more, um, to get more people involved. You mentioned it's a growing sport. Uh, people enjoy it. People see a sense of purpose in it. So yeah, let's do some more you know, conversations, chats uh, to get other people involved in, in something completely worthwhile. So I okay. hope we can do more things together. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Take care and talk to you soon. Bye for Bye. now. Bye-bye.